Awesome. I'd like to encourage you guys to give us any questions on Facebook and YouTube. We'll be answering those. And I've got some from you guys on Instagram who sent me questions earlier in the week. So we'll touch on those as well as Rebecca does her painting demo. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, um, awesome to have you here. Yeah, especially demoing the beta because I'm super in love with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys know that we're a big fan of Rebecca's work. She's done a couple of commissions for us. Um, Orangutan's Daycare, which we use quite often yeah. in our marketing, and the giraffe riding a bicycle, which I know a lot of you guys find hilarious when I use it in <laughs> tutorials and things. So. Only serious stuff. <laughs> yeah, only serious stuff. So I think you guys will really enjoy this demo today, but um, let's get to it. Okay, so cool. um, So that's all up on screen. Um, I have created this artwork that's in, just in values for, at the moment because I want to demonstrate the new Colour Harmony tool. Uh, before, when we wanted to um, work with Colour Harmony, you'd have to go out of the app, um, maybe to a website or a second, um, third-party app to pull in some colours. So now in the Colour Picker, we have got a bunch of different Colour Harmony tools which is going to make our lives so much easier. Um, so we've got complementary colours, we've got split complementary, analogous, triadic um, and tetradic and it makes it so much easier to create a colour scheme when you're doing it based on colour harmonies which are um, always yeah, very, they work so well. So I'm going to um, start out colouring in this um, toucan, probably we'll start with the uh, complementary colour yeah. colourway. Um, so we'll just Flip to that and so you can just see that the two dots move around on the color wheel really easily you can pick whatever one that you want um i always <laughs> steer away from green for some reason green really don't i do not mean green don't get along <laughs> so um i'll and also knowing that i'm doing a toucan which has an orange beak i will um it makes a good starting color to base the harmony off so we'll go with the orange and the blue and i'll just put that up the top on this layer here, which I'll drop the colours into. Um, so we've got the orange and we've got a blue. And so from here, we're going to need some different colour values as well. So um, some darker colours, some lighter colours for the highlights. So um, we've got these two colour harmonies straight in from the colour dropper. Um, and using the rectangle selection tool, you can just select some. And then with hue saturation, super easy to bring in some darker shades which will complement those colors that we've bought in from color harmony so um, maybe something that's a little bit cooler and darker um, and then also some highlight colors as well um, uh, something that's just a bit brighter for the brighter bits um, and then i generally do slightly brighter again And then we will need some blacks and stuff. So you pick the colour. I generally go for when, <clears throat> when I'm illustrating, I tend not to use black because I find that it like dulls everything yeah. down a heap. Um, so if I get the dark blue and then I can make some black replacements out of that, um, which we can use for the toucan's eyes and his body. Cause, um, and so that will make a really good starting point from a colour palette that's just come from inside Procreate. Um, using the color complementary color tool, so I'll work through now coloring that in while we have we can have a chat. While, yeah, yeah. While I do that, sounds good. Um, just with the document as well, the way that I've set it up is everything is um, as shapes on individual layers set to alpha lock, so that that way when I select the color, I can color it in and add all of the textures and stuff directly onto that layer. It over uh, like it going outside of the boundaries. I, this is how I typically work with like alpha locks, clipping masks, um, and then highlights are set to. I just recently moved away from um, overlay color mode to add mm. after that last. After with Scarlett yeah, and yeah. Pauline Voss's live like, stream, yes. Yeah. She said I'm painting with light, and I'm like, yes, okay, overlay, you are <laughs> done for me. I am moving on. Um, so yeah. Uh, what uh, one thing to remember with your colors as well is that the cooler colors will always recede so they're great for background elements um and the foreground elements um like if you use warmer colors they'll come forward um 
So yeah, if you're trying to do um, your warmer colors in the background, you sometimes need to darken them or desaturate them mm. so that the values read correctly and the focus point is, yeah. Yeah, right. fantastic yeah. tips. I know a lot of you guys uh, ask me heaps of questions about values and color harmony as well. And um, I'm not properly trained in uh, drawing. Everything that I do is just kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna shove some colors everywhere so it's nice to be it's able to a actually way to have work, a little though. bit of it explained i think <laughs> yeah. yeah i think a lot of it is still trial and error um but having the color harmonies there to work from just means that you have that really solid starting point to yeah. work from and i'm always shifting on hue saturation sliders um mainly too saturated um and i always go a bit towards pink but it's um yeah just having a in app starting point is super handy yeah, yeah. really useful it would be great for you guys to get started with your color harmonies as well to be able to just build a color palette from the app itself yeah um, but really cool tip with the using the selection tool and the sliders to then create just a palette on the fly from those two colors yeah yeah it um it makes it a lot easier um you can and i always i always work with a little um swatch area like i have set up here it, mm. um just saves having now that we have floating color picker though, I don't know if I'll need to use it as much, especially yeah. with history tool. Um, that's just gonna save workflow time so much. Um, and make everything easier. Mm. Thank you. And with the color, <laughs> yeah. The floating color palette, you can also have it set to um, your palettes. It doesn't just have to be the color picker. You can actually choose the palettes from the bottom and then pull the slider onto the screen so it's waiting there. So if you've created a little palette with your color harmony, you can have it right there to pick the colors from. But as Rebecca said, um, on the iPad Pros, you'll also have color history. So any colors that you've used up to, oh, I can't remember exactly how many colors, but they'll um, appear in this little yeah, that's that you here you can from. see there's about 11, 10 or 11, yeah. or maybe 12. It's um, super handy, um, especially if you're using a, a very strict color palette mm. um, to go back in and get the one that you've previously been using. Just yeah, definitely. Now, we seem to have a question from the audience, Rebecca. They would like to know if you teach any online classes. I don't currently. Um, I, it's, it's on the to-do list and I really would like to do it. Um, there has been, I did put a call out the, uh, a while ago asking if anyone would be interested in a Skillshare or anything like that. And there were some people that said they were. Mm. Um, I've just got to work on my public speaking <laughs> <laughs> and my confidence. But um, I think it... Um, I'm actually really interested to know that people, like it surprises me that people want to know my process. So yes, um, I don't have any currently except for obviously there's the live stream that I did for Procreate last year with the Tassie Devil on the motorbike, mm. which shows how I, um, how I set up my documents and how I select my colours back before Colour Harmony Colour came Harmony, along. Yeah. yeah, so that's all changed. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I don't at the moment, but if you're interested, um, you can follow my Instagram and then you will find out straight away when I've been brave enough to do it. <laughs> so you'll be able to follow Rebecca's Instagram. You can find her artwork on our page um, or she's at Rebecca Mills Draws on yep. Instagram. So you'll be able to follow her there. Because the Rebecca Mills, that has the Rebecca Mills. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't so. use that. Rebe Rebecca Mills, if you're listening, can I please... <laughs> You're not Please. even using it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing in your workflow that I've noticed, and I also get a lot of questions online about, is uh, clipping masks. Yes, um, clipping masks are... Well, they came in last year, didn't they? It was yeah. like 4.2. Yeah, 4.2. Yeah. Um, that it saves so many layers as well, because previously, before they came along, you'd have to um, add a mask to every single layer that you mm. wanted. So now essentially, like if you look at this beak that I'm working on now, um, the bottom layer here, everything that is clipped into that will stay within that shape. So it makes it really easy if you're doing um, complex layer arrangements or um, you want to chuck a ch texture into something mm. or, um, oh yeah, it just, it just makes the workflow heaps easier to arrange. It's kind of like grouping all of everything into that one shape. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really useful. I guess it's a little bit similar, guys, to Alpha Lock if you're not familiar with the two concepts. But the difference being mainly that Clipping Mask is non-destructive. So Alpha Lock, it's going to lock the selection on that layer for you, and you'll only be able to draw within the shape that's on that layer, which is great. 
but you then can't go and remove the elements without you know, undoing some of the work you've already done. So with clipping masks, you can set it to clip to that base shape. And then if you don't like it in the future, you can just delete that clipping mask and you're back to the original thing without having to go through and undo everything you've done after that. So, And it also makes it great as well. Say if you're doing the shape of an animal and you want to change the shape of the animal, you can just easily do it to the base layer. Yeah. Um, and everything else will change accordingly because it's just clipped within that shape. So it mm. does make it easy... Um, so for instance, if I, with this beak of this toucan, if I wanted to change his beak size here, I could just erase a big section of it and all of the elements that are clipped to it inside um, will just adjust to it. So mm. that makes it easier because before we'd have to then go and change all the masks and yeah, um, yeah super amazing time saver. Really useful. Mm. Someone would like to know if you have a preferred canvas size. Um, for like, if I'm posting on Instagram, I generally hit like, 4,000 by 4,000 pixels, which I think gets you around the 27 layer mark. Um, mm. And that's because I have a red bubble shop as well. So if I'm doing anything for fun, I'll just chuck it up on there and that will get you most of the products enough resolution for that. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so for fun, um, if I'm doing stuff for you guys, generally it's like 4,000 by 3,000 because that's screen res, well not screen res, but like High proportions. quality res good yeah. enough for everything that we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So this one here at the moment, I, I set it up originally at um, uh, 4,000 by 3,000, but I've downscaled scaled a little bit just to get a couple extra layers in there. Mm. Mm. And because I know this question will be asked about layers, <laughs> um, layer, layer limits are dictated by the amount of RAM that is available on your iPad. So the iPad Pros can do more layers at higher canvas sizes than say the iPad Air. Um, that's because it has more RAM available. And if you would like more layers, then at the moment, the only way to do that is to either get an iPad Pro if you don't have one or use a smaller canvas size, which will give you more layers. And it's um, surprising how little a down step you need to do to get the more layers. Yeah. Like I, I only just dropped this down by 500 pixels on one dimension and then I got an extra 20 layers. So mm. that's a pretty big jump for not a big change. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty, pretty useful. Mm. And if you're worried about also losing the res, you can um, duplicate the canvas before you down scale and then yeah. you can pull in those higher res elements that you need. I would always recommend duplicating your works if you're going to do any major changes to them, guys. It includes like crop and resize, um, any color edits that you're going to be doing so that you have that copy later that you can go back to just in case you stop up on one and you're like, ah, now I can't go back. Yep. And we all, um, we all stuff up. <laughs> we all stuff up. We all stuff up. Speaking of stuffing up though, how do you deal with it if you're doing a piece and it's not turning out how you envisioned it? Every piece starts out not turning out how I envisioned it. Every piece has a moment where I'm like, this is rubbish. I should not be an illustrator. Um, <laughs> but if you keep working through it, just keep working at it. Sometimes they need to be put to sleep. But <laughs> if you just keep working at it, it will be okay. Um, a lot of the time it's just maybe the colours are slightly out or... Um, yeah, it's very rare that you need to go all the way back to the drawing board. But if you mm. go back to like the fundamentals of what makes a good illustration, you know, like good palette, good composition. Um, and I find as well for me, um, if I work through the normal steps, which is like the rough sketch and then the sketch and then the color block, it should look good at every stage. So if you're working through the process and your sketch doesn't look good, don't progress with it. Just keep, mm. keep working on that one step before you keep working down because if you get to the end and you've colored and you've rendered um and it looks rubbish it's really hard to make those changes to fix it yeah, yeah. fundamentals are really important guys so make sure you can nail those before you really push on with any piece i think that's really important hmm. and how about how about how about <laughs> how do you go about um finding the inspiration for your pieces um that's a really good question um a lot of my pieces are really silly um, <laughs> and I don't, I think it's because I have small children in my house and I think it's also because like I'm a bit silly. Um, I really just enjoy making things that make me laugh. Mm. Um, yeah. And I surround myself with people that make me laugh. Like my friend Sam, hey Sam, demanded that I added on this face to this <laughs> worm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's just. 
thing, things that I see, like in terms of color palettes, it's things that I see, like I often be walking down the street and I'll take a photo of a plant. It's got a beautiful flower that has yeah. beautiful colors in it. Um, but yeah, in terms of the things that I'm drawing, um, I'll be in the shower and I'll think like an elephant going down a hill on a bike, that would be really funny. And so then I'll draw it. <laughs> um, I don't really have many clients that come with me, come to me with a elephant going down the hill on a bike, but if you need that, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the things that we really like about your work in general is that they are really whimsical and funny. Yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit silly. <laughs> it's okay, we can call it silly. <laughs> <laughs> silly. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just I like making lighthearted things. I think like life is quite serious, um, but so it's nice to sometimes create art that's um, a bit not. Mm, mm. Definitely. Yeah. Some light blue colours. Yeah, um, I think I might change those trees though to the foreground oranges because I want them to be bring them forward. Mm. Mm. I'm just colouring with the charcoal block just because I am I'm quite lazy with my brushes and I like to just use most of the ones that come in app. Um, charcoal brush goes to a nice size for colour filling and then it gives a kind of nice textural element to it as well. Um, so that's one of my favourites if I am like nutting out a colour scheme for an illustration I'll quite often use colour um, charcoal block. Mm. And then it's bonobo chalk. Oh that's a good one. It's my favourite. And um, everyone should use bonobo chalk. Okay. It just gives a really nice texture. It's really consistent. And um, like I think as well, like this kind of noise in illustration has been quite popular lately. So, um, yeah, it's a good way to add a bit of interest. I quite often get um, comments saying that people like the textures that I use in my illustrations and a lot of the ones that I've been using doing lately in Procreate are just using bonobo chalk and then a yeah. pencil. So, yeah. Uh, there we go. And keep working through the different colour layers. Mm. You were just saying before that you draw quite silly subjects in your pieces. Yeah. Um, how did you develop that style and that love for a little bit of silly in your uh, artwork? I don't know. Um, yeah, sometimes I sit down and I, like, for instance, the piece that I did for the Procreate Art Prize, I'm like, I'm going to do something that's not a smiling animal eating a worm or something like that. <laughs> um, and that took so much effort. Yeah. It really, I really struggled not to make them smile or, like, um, not to use, like, every colour in the whole um, in the whole app. Um, I think it's just sometimes people, like, intrinsically have that style that they like. I really just like bright, colourful. Mm. Um, and I'm always drawn to artists that use that style as well. Like a lot of the artists that I follow on Instagram um, have very bright, um, um, whimsical yeah. like, subject matters. All right, so leaves now. I might do them in light blue and see how that goes because we can always hue saturation, switch them later on. Mm. Um, I flip the canvas around a heap and I think it's my favourite bit about Procreate is being able to change the direction of the canvas and getting really nice clean brush strokes um, by the natural flow of your hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apple pencil is fantastic. It is the best. It is. Honestly, it's the best. <laughs> and um, my iPad actually is um, one of the, the Gen 2s. So I'm borrowing one of Procreate's ones today and yeah, Gentry, Gentry Life. Um, Trying out the new pencil. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. I think, um, honey, I'm buying a new one. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I think that's how it goes. Like I had a second gen and I was like, no, no, it's fine. Like I'm probably not going to upgrade. Yeah. And then as soon as I tried the second gen pencil with the third gen pro, I was like, mm. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to need one of those. Yeah. Georgie and I were talking before about like my flight here yesterday and having to charge up the pencil and then I'm holding this tiny little cap 
<laughs> like, what am I going to do with this little cap? I'm going to drop it on. Yeah, it's it's a stressful. When the cap is not it's really on, it's stressful. Just, it's really stressful. They keep such an eye on it. Yeah. With these ones, you just clip them to the pad and it's so good. I actually um, told Georgie about the story where my mum actually ate her pencil cap because <laughs> she thought it was her vitamin pill and... It was not her vitamin pill. <laughs> Hi, mum. Um, what? Yeah, yep. <laughs> so before colour harmony, before we brought this in with the Procreate 5 Beta, yep. how did you go about deciding the colour palettes that you use? Um, so similar to how I did it in the live draw, um, uh, a lot of... I think colour, after being a graphic designer for so long, mm. um, colour theory is such a huge part of what you do, like knowing what co complementary colours work together. And um, so a lot of it was second nature. Um, but so generally I, using the charcoal um, block tool, laid out over everything and then hue sat everything until yeah. I'm happy with the balance. Um, and I'll probably will do that to this at the end as well because... Um, me and the Hugh saturation slider are the best friends. Um, it's my favourite bit about illustrating. Um, also some new viewers who are joining us. Hey guys, nice to see you here. Um, they would like to, they wanted to ask if you just recap the colour harmony because they've missed the start. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm nearly finished with this illustration and then I'm going to move on to, we'll do maybe the triadic yeah, colour. Cool. So maybe, would it be, you guys mind waiting for me to, just, I think I need, probably five more minutes on this one and then we'll start the next one so yeah cool we'll touch on it again in a second guys so hold tight and we'll show you exactly what color harmony tool is doing uh, just got a second here while we're while we're um moving on the canvas like that it seems that it is moving around on the live stream is that Correct. We might no. just have to lock the orientation of the okay. pad. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, I'll have to. We should be able to just if we work down here. We yep. Should be able to lock. Cool. Awesome. Right. All right. Done. Hopefully that's <laughs> fixed, guys. Sorry about that. Tech difficulties. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just making some slight tweaks to this. So essentially, since it worked with the. Um, complementary colors in the beginning if we just um, might need to just slightly move things to make sure that they're sitting right in the picture um, mm. and making sure things are the right tonal value um, so that they're reading in the correct position in the illustration because you want the, the birds to be the focal point and I think mm. talking that we need to bump up the pink on the worm and the birds and maybe switch that a little um, I find with the hue saturation slider as well, you really don't need to move a heap to make a big difference. And um, I tend to, at the end, flatten everything down um, and make 5% to the left. <laughs> and it makes a big difference. It's always so cool to watch other people draw. I learn new things every time. Yeah, well, I'm learning new things all the time with the different <laughs> apps, the stuff that we get, yeah. Um, yeah, normally this is not my colouring process, but I find it re it's been really interesting to have one illustration and then seeing it coloured in all the different ways. Mm. Um, but yeah, might, so that's brought in another green tone, but that, I think that will be okay. I'll turn off the colour swatches up the top. And so I think that's a really good starting point for a full illustration render. Obviously, it needs still needs some work. Um, like I would probably, with the trees, um, like I always slide pink. So I would bring it that way, desaturate it a bit, darken it a bit, bonobo chalk again, and then um, darken up the edges just to bring some focus in the middle again. And the background, um, so we might use slide that slightly as well. Go back to the leaves. So 
I see what you mean. It really doesn't take much of a change, does yeah, it? Yeah, and it kind of brings everything together. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of artists as well that will do, I'll show you in a second, which is a really nice way to work. Like if you're working with a complex color palette and you just want to bring everything together, chucking a layer on top in a single color like that and then putting it on uh, color really low, that in itself just has made everything more cohesive yeah and um it's only 35 percent but it's like kind of like tinted everything so that they're all friends yeah um and sometimes i do that as well or do something like that another way that i'll work is i'll flatten an entire illustration duplicate it and then um hue saturation slip the top layer deleting a large section of it so that it gives it like an kind of changes the lighting and draws the viewing towards the center. Mm. And that same tip guys with putting like a, um, a new layer on top of your illustration and filling it with color can also work for checking your values as well. I did a tutorial on this a little while back. Oh, um, this with grayscale? Yeah. yeah. So you can just put, fill a black layer on top of all your work and then just slide it down a bit. And then it'll bring up the values. You'll be able to see if the image reads properly. Top tips. Okay, well, I might leave that one for now and then I'll go back to the beginning and talk about, um, and we'll maybe we'll do triadic for the next one. But yeah, mm. so that's using complementary colours. I think the good thing about this as well, like when you're using complementary colours, if you flatten that down and then run it through the hue saturation slider completely, pretty much all of the points are going to work because we've used complementary colours. So as you go around, they'll all work. Yeah. Um, so it gives you a lot of versatility. Um, it would be good if you like doing logo um, sketches for a client as well because you could um, easy switch them around the colours and like supply a heap of different options. Mm. Mm. Okay, so what I do um, with this, with the colour harmony tool, you'll find it is under the colour, um, it's here on the colour button, um, the harmony tool down the bottom. And so up it says colours and then you've got the option of complementary, split, split complementary, and now, and how do you pronounce it? An analogous. An analogous. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Triadic and tetradic. So the, obviously the um, tetradic has got four different colors. Um, triadic is three. Um, the anal analogous. Someone will correct me on that. Um, that's got. That has got three that are a similar family, and I think I might actually use this one for the next one. Yeah. Um, so you can adjust the darkness or the lightness of your colors as well. Um, so I really like bright colors. Mm. So we will start there. Um, on this color layer, I'll just get a hard airbrush and drop in the swatches. So we've got like a ready a red, an orange, and a pink. So they will be the base colors and that's come directly out of Procreate. So we don't need to go to any other websites or anything like that. I used to have like all of these color palettes saved in my um, image library that yep. I could bring in. <laughs> yeah, I can delete them. <laughs> don't need them anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've made a selection and um, just to create some other values for the illustration that are based on those swatches, um, I'll change it like slightly to get the cooler shadow colors. So sometimes desaturate those as well. Um, and then to get the highlight colors, back to the hue saturation, we will um, brighten it up, lighten it up, and warm it up a little bit. And then from there, I always like to have just one extra layer, which is white. Like, so that can be the super highlights. Um, sometimes I don't use them, but it's good to have the variety in the color palette mm. and then we need a black so um, I never use blacks um, generally so I tend to always um, use a cool color just really dark so it's like 90% um, 90% black like that value but in a color instead mm. um, so with this one I'll pick a cooler color because cooler colors always work nicely for shadows and then I will darken it a little bit um, 
that can be our mid black and then we'll have another one which will be like our mid black shadows which is almost black but it's not um, and yeah so using that color palette we can color the whole illustration and it will um, have a really cohesive hopefully a really cohesive story by the end of it um, yeah so I think you guys are really going to like the color harmony tool, especially a lot of you who maybe are just starting out and aren't sure really how to pick your color palettes. It's going to be really useful for you guys because you'll be able to choose one of the options for color harmony, um, the different versions of it. So complementary, split complementary, um, tetradic, that sort of thing, and choose a color that you know you want to work with. And it will give you the other options around the color wheel that are going to work really well with that in your illustration. Yeah, that's a good point as well because um, with this one here, because I've got Toucan's always got orange beaks, like the colour palettes that I'm picking always start with the orange. So mm. we can see here, um, like with the analogous, I've got the orange there, but we could also push it all the way this way if I liked working with greens. Mm. Mm. Um, so the question yeah. that's just come in is um, how do you make your shape layers because they're so sharp? Oh, um, I have... I get asked this a lot on Instagram as well. It is literally just this hard airbrush smooth that comes with Procreate. Um, I've got it, I set it to really small. I'll just show you at the top and we'll draw a shape. You set that airbrush to really, really tiny. Um, and then when you draw, you get this amazing really line. And we are going to use quick shape because. <laughs> um, any different shape. It used to be a vector illustrator, so um, moving over to a raster based app and actually went out to. I remember them, but yeah, use a lot of quick shape, a really hard airbrush, um, fill it, um, you'll get really good shapes, and make sure IRS that you work, you need to be doing that for your base layer or any, um, any shapes that are within lightly so it doesn't have the. Yeah. Mm. And because this always comes up on Instagram, I know a lot of you still don't know that quick shape exists and it's a lot of fun. So all Rebecca was doing there was drawing the shape and then holding at the end of the line and oh. that will snap the shape to the perfect yep. or, you know, to smooth. And then if you put a second finger on the screen, just tap it on the screen, the shape will snap to perfect. So if you've done a circle and it's a little bit lopsided, if you're just holding there at the end, tap on the screen and it will snap to a perfect circle. You, you can, got squares, you got yeah, squares, every, rectangles, um, triangles. You can um, even do stars with a little bit of a hack. Oh, yeah. I don't know the hack. Oh, because it's got it does polylines. Oh yes, so yes. So if you just do the shape and then don't close it, yeah, it'll snap, and then you can use the edit shape at the top to make it into the perfect star. Well, the arc tool is my favorite, just because you get such a clean, crisp line, and then you can adjust it as well. So, for instance, with the toucan's head or whatever, I would have been using an arc. Mm. Um, it just gives you so much control and as a vector illustrator that's used to the pen tool it just um, I really like that aesthetic yeah. they're really crisp look definitely we've got someone in here who's just said um, is it your preference to put the color palette on the canvas and why wouldn't you use the new floating color palette we did touch on just Rebecca um, just because I'm not used to it yet. Um, <laughs> I really need to get my head around doing it, but um, I find as well it makes it a lot easier to color drop because, well, it should, yeah, floating, the floating color tool, yeah, you're right, I'll pull it over. Um, <laughs> we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. Um, and I'll, yes, so in future, I will be swatching those all out, putting them into the palettes, and using them directly from there instead of making them on my canvas. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is just an existing workflow I've got. And normally when I, in my normal workflow, I don't know if you missed back um, earlier in the chat, I normally do a big rough um, using the charcoal um, block to rough out all the colours all at once. Um, I do that for it, my commercial jobs, everything, and it really helps to get a really cohesive look. Um, mm. But yeah, this one I've set it up a little differently just so that I can quickly colour things and show that how the colour harmonies are going to give you so many more options mm. um, for the way that you colour your artwork. And for those of you who may miss, have may, may, ugh, okay, may have missed, we'll start again, <laughs> that little bit of the conversation earlier with the floating colour palette. Um, 
you can still have, you don't just have to have the color wheel open when you're using Photo Color Picker. You can also have the, the color harmony, the values, the color palettes as well. So um, if Rebecca decides that she likes this in her workflow next time, she oh, can I just. I do. I like it. I'm doing it right palette. now. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I'm <laughs> doing it right now. Um, okay, so we've got a new palette open. I'll just color drop everything here. So I start from dark to light. You put it straight there. I got my pinks. And I've got the reds. Didn't want that one there, but it's there. And now it's not going to be impacting on my workflow. So thank, thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> yeah. I found as well with the live draw that I learned some things that I could have been doing better. And here we are. Thank you. Nice. Whoever that was. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect example of how the new color picker can be used as a color palette directly yeah. on the screen. That's yeah. actually quicker as well because you don't have to hold when you're selecting your color. True, yeah. Mm. You need for the eyedropper. Yep. So you're a freelancer, Rebecca. Yep. yep. Have you got any advice for new people trying to get into the freelancing Ooh. business and what have your experiences been doing it? Um, oh, I would suggest, um, I was really lucky when I got out of, I'm a trained graphic designer. So I started um, as a graphic designer in-house at an agency for a long time. Um, and I learned so much about how to actually run a business through my job there. So if possible, I would always recommend that people take a, a role in an agency if possible before they go out on their own just because freelancing is so much more about the business side of things mm. than it is about the illustration side of things like there's so many um, um you know you just really need those business skills yeah. to be able to do it um and in terms of the switch over from graphic design to illustration um I just um, put together a portfolio of stuff that um, I knew that the market that I worked in was looking for. So I think um, the one thing to look at is, is your style commercially viable? Um, and what is your market and how do you access that market? Mm. Um, so for instance, for me, obviously, um, bright color silly animals my ideal market would be like kid lit like and yeah. children's products and that kind of thing or like if you've got a really um adult style like maybe if you like really serious topics maybe editorial would be better for you um it's i think it's definitely worth going off and having a look at researching the rates available in each of the different segments of illustration mm. because some pay a lot differently to others and at the end of the day um as much as we are creatives and we love creating, paying the bills is a really big part of being able to survive and not be stressed out. Like, mm. um, I think mental health is a big issue for um, freelancers as well because it is we're quite isolated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so finding good networks, um, maybe finding um, a mentor, um, like chatting to people that are doing what you want to do, and finding out how they got there. It's all really good things to do. Um, just hang out with cool people that, yeah, that are happy to share their tips or, yeah. Um, but yeah, you, um, if you're looking for work, you need to have your own website. I really, really think you need to have a proper website. You need to have like a proper online presence. Um, it's been a few times that I've wanted to refer gigs to illustrators that I know are amazing, mm. but they don't have like a proper website. Yeah, and it's like. Um, like your Instagram feed is great, but um, yeah, it's not promoting your best work. It's your most current, whereas you really your portfolio needs to be your best work and mm. um, sometimes the best work that's applicable to that client. Um, yeah, so it's, it's very hard. I get a lot of questions of like how to get work and I think it's just put your best work out there. Don't put, put, don't put work out there that... Um, I don't know, put, you put your best stuff out. Yeah. Yeah, everything that you do um, is seen. So I've got like a folder of dead artworks that haven't worked out, but so they, they just don't get 
I don't get to see the light of day. Mm. Probably a, there's just like a really sad movie in there, I think, and there's a plot line <laughs> in there. Sad movie. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I feel like there's Artwork something. Artwork graveyard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it would be really important from that regard as well to oh. only oh beta software guys, <laughs> fun times, um, to also be filling your portfolio with the stuff that you want to be hired for. Oh, right? that's because, an absolutely good point. Yeah, we hear a lot of a lot of stories from people around the community who've done all of this work and they've just put it all in their portfolio and they ended up getting hired for stuff that their heart's not in. You know, that's yep. really hard. Yep, absolutely. And um, yeah, put the stuff out there that you love, that you really enjoy doing and want to do more of. Mm. That way you're going to attract the clients that you want to attract. And not just clients that are going to pay the bills. Yes. Yep. You'll get the best of both worlds. Yes. Paying the bills is good. Always good. <laughs> Speaking of though, actually, that yep. was one question that we got through Instagram. Yep. Um, when you're starting out in freelancing, everything can be a little bit hard. Um, so yep. how, do you, how would you advise people to go about um, finding the value of their work and not undercharging, Ooh. overcharging? Yeah. Okay. Um, it is really hard um, to start out as a freelancer because you really want to get. Um, oh, I swung the wrong lamp. Sorry, I was getting confused. <laughs> um, yeah, you need to join some industry orgs and get uh, like a feel for what the rate is in the market. Mm. Um, it's so much harder if you start working for clients at really low rates because when they come back to you next time and you want to put the prices up, it's really hard. Um, if you are an illustrator with a lot of experience and you've been doing it for a while, you have a real value um, to clients um, yeah. and you, you need to pay bills. So um, it's, it's hard. It's a really hard balance. And I find it, like I know at the moment there's a lot of conversation on Twitter about like, should we enter competitions? Mm. Like, and um, you know, our jobs are really worth exposure. And I think, there is a happy middle ground in there. Like, obviously, I enter competitions. I enter the, the Procreate Art Prize. I enter competitions all the time. But, um, yeah, I think um, before you start freelancing, have a good buffer in your bank account. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's a wild ride to build up that client base. Um, make sure that... Um, you're not taking jobs out of panic for bills. Um, it makes it, you can negotiate in such a better position when you're um, not panicked. Mm. Um, and also, I found as well, it's so much easier to negotiate better rates when the clients are coming to you. So, um, like I know, there's a lot of people that do letter box drops, and if it, if it got quiet, I probably would do the same. But when you're doing that and you're searching for the work, it's a lot harder. Yeah. Um, to then. Like I, I want work, but yeah, yeah. When people are coming to you, it's easier. Yeah, definitely. Um, yes, and people come to you by putting your best work out there, <laughs> um, and making sure they're seeing it. So, I don't know. Um, maybe the clients that you want to work for aren't on Instagram. Um, figure out who your ideal client are and is, and where do they hang out, and yeah. how how will they get to see you? Because a lot of the time, it's all the time for the big clients it's not instagram and it's not twitter they're mm. not on there for some of them are a lot of the editorial work is but yeah find that place and hang out where your ideal client is i think yeah. it's a good tip also it's a little bit harder for us in australia because we're so far away from anything but um a lot of our european followers you should definitely consider i think going to some art events around it's a really good way to network, to meet new people, um, to learn new skills, to get that valuable information. You might even find some friends for life or mentors, that sort of thing. So, I'm so jealous of you. <laughs> I'm so jealous. Very, um, very lucky yep. that um, we get to go and hang out with you guys. But for a lot of the artists in Australia, it's kind of impossible because it's really difficult to get anywhere. So yep. if you're in Europe, make the most of it yes. if you can. Yes. Just go for me. Take some, <laughs> take some photos for me. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Send them it. to her on yeah. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, hit me up. Um, <laughs> I really, yeah, it is. I think if 
I could do that, I would do it. And I do it all the time in Perth. Like I go along to the ladies' wine and design nights mm. and it's... um sounds really fun. It is really fun. We have like different speakers all the time and um, it's just really nice to, as a freelancer, you don't get to talk creative yeah. stuff. And um, like this, I don't have a heap of creative people like, like I've got great friends and I've got a really great family, but not many creatives. So being able to go along and like, I don't know, chat about like new software updates or like <laughs> deadlines or that kind of thing. It's just really nice. It's really, yeah. really nice. Sometimes it's important to be around those people who understand them. You can just kind of vent a little bit <laughs> yeah. about the stuff yeah. that's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think as well, like it's it's good for our mental health to be able to realize yeah. like like so many people are feeling the same. Like I don't know, maybe they're second guessing themselves, or maybe they're not really happy with that latest artwork they did. But like everyone is feeling it, so um, mm. it's okay if you feel it too. Definitely, mm. and it's something that hangs about on social media a lot. I think is that people kind of subscribe to this myth that professional artists are able to go from A to Z with no troubles and their process Ooh. is completely linear and they have no problems and they yeah. get all the clients, you know. Yeah. It's no. um grass is always greener. Everyone yeah. struggles, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think social media is like great and also really hard um cuz you do compare yourself to everyone mm. all the time and even if you have amazing jobs like you're sitting on the couch with Georgie at Procreate you, <laughs> you've got you're looking at other people like oh I'd really like to be doing that amazing mural yeah. or something like you're always looking and thinking oh I wish that was me um yeah but it's it's, it's great for ne especially when you're in an isolated city mm. so it is a balance definitely someone watching would like to know what's your favorite brush oh my favorite so I've actually this is my favorite list here um, I, my hard airbrush, my Bonobo chalk, my Nico roll, I use that for sketching all the time, mm. the charcoal block, um, the smooth pencil, um, and this pencil, that's, um, this is just a bigger version of that one. Um, and this is just one Kyle brush that I've bought in. I bought the old set from before, um, CC happened and I've imported that. <laughs> as an ABR um, and that's really nice for if you want like I'll just use it now on these background bushes you can get like a really cool like modeled effect I don't know if I can turn up yeah. the colors but it gives you just a bit of texture mm. a bit of automatically a bit of interest and depth and then you can like add some stuff over the end but I'm really excited to see what comes out of the new update with the brushes and everything um, the possibilities are amazing yeah um, and the brush people are gonna go nuts so yeah, I cannot wait definitely. to buy what they make oh because that's not me I can't I can't make a brush <laughs> oh, man, the brush makers are gonna go insane with this new update but um, in case you guys aren't familiar ABR is Photoshop brush import so or Photoshop brush file so um, Rebecca's got a couple of her favorite brushes from Photoshop that she's now able to import using Procreate 5. Yeah. Um, how's that been for you? So easy and so good. Um, I've I had these um, brushes here that I created, these paint stamps. So painted them myself oh, cool. with the kids. And you can like just, I've, they were sitting in my Photoshop vault because I don't tend to render much in there anymore. Mm. Um, but now I'll just put a new layer in. So you just, just <laughs> chuck a bunch, of, just you know, and it, it looks like looks like real paint. Yeah, I bought that straight from Photoshop into here. It's super easy, and it add, you can add texture really easy. Like, um, say for instance, on this background down here, um, chuck in like one of these in a darker color, um, make the brush really big. Um, no, sorry, I need a clip, clipping mask that. So I'm just putting that into a clipping mask so that it doesn't affect the colours that I've got underneath. And then um, you get automatic texture added, super easy. That's cool. And then change the blending mode to something like an overlay or a multiply.
and just yeah automatic texture easy peasy yeah and for those questions that may come through um once you import your abr brush you can edit it with any of procreate's brush editing features so you can customize it a little bit more but once you've imported them photoshop brushes will change to dot brush files which is procreate's brush format um so you won't be able to re-export them out into photoshop because it doesn't work that way but should be fun i'm excited to see what you guys do with all of that Yeah, just a little bit of texture makes a big difference. All right, the leaves. I think we need a bit more orange. Um, so I'll do those in orange. Um, yeah, so charcoal block is the one that I'm using at the moment to do the fills. I mainly use it just because it is um, a really nice size and gives a bit of texture mm. and it fills things really easily. Someone in the comments would like to know if you think it's important to always start in grayscale. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Def I rarely start in grayscale. I did it like this this time because um, just show the colour harmony. Mm. But normally I work, um, you can check out my live draw that I did um, last, was it earlier this year? Earlier yeah, this early year. this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, so normally I do a sketch and then I set that to multiply on one layer and then I just, with the charcoal block, just drop all the colours in underneath. And I think, you know, working with values is really good because then you can get the visual hierarchy. But sometimes there's really fun ways to get that visual hierarchy by using colours that are similar on the value scale. Like mm. um, I think with the um, giraffe going downhill, I think I use purple in the shadows. Um, it's a very similar colour value. I think if you put that one through a grayscale filter, it would be pretty flat. Yeah. But it reads well because of the colours. Mm. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't always use black and white. But it's been a really interesting way to work. And I really like when app updates come out because you can try different things and see if it works for you. And maybe, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But at least you've got different options. Mm. So with this drawing, this painting demo, we've touched on um, color. We've done a lot with color harmony. We've touched on ABR import, but on Instagram during the week, someone wanted to know um, what features of Procreate Five have you really kind of grasped onto and will be making an appearance in your workflow? Is there anything else other than the color harmony and the uh, fighting color picker? Oh, the brushes. Oh, yeah. The, um... I tried animation assist <laughs> yeah, and it is amazing. Um, I am not an animator. Um, I did this one. I'll have to show you later. It's terrible. But it's, it's like a fish dancing up and down, but it's like his head's dancing and then his tail's dancing and he's dripping blood on the floor. It's horrible. Oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's true. But um, animation assist, I'm super excited about. Just even the stuff that's coming out of the people that have the beta now is just mm. phenomenal. Um, it's super easy to use. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the content that comes out of that. Um, but yes, the brushes, the colours. Um, it, take, it takes a while with a new beta update as well to figure out like what parts are going to impact. Yeah. You get, if you've, so when, you, when um, Quick Shape came out, it like impacted so much about my workflow. And then I'm like, well, I really like how I'm working now. Like which part of these new tools are going to fit in that yeah. process? Um, so yeah, obviously color harmonies is going to be a massive one. Um, yeah, mm. maybe I'll try a bit more animation. I would like to. I think it's be good for social media content and stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. I'd love to see some of your pieces with just like subtle animations, maybe in the yeah. background. Like maybe yeah. Maybe this one, even the tree leaves, just kind of floating a little bit. Yeah. The yeah. worm screaming. With yeah, yeah. Screaming <laughs> face. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's having a bad day. It's <laughs> not his best day. <laughs> no, he is not. I think for me, it's the floating color picker, honestly, oh, is my yeah. main thing. Like, yeah. I never thought it was something that I really needed, and then I tried it. Yep. And now I can't ever go back. Well, I think I'm half an hour into it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think those that are testing the beta have like, um, found that it's been a little bit touch and go, but yeah, this one has been sure. super stable. Um, yeah, I definitely will be using this. Um, thank you for whoever mentioned that I should try it. Um, <laughs> Love yeah. trying new features on the yeah. fly on a yeah. live stream. It's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. And like, it's working really good. Um, 
I would be using that all the time. So we've only got a couple minutes left, guys. If you've got any last minute questions, please send them through now. Um, um, quick. Otherwise, we'll uh, start wrapping it up. Yeah. Hmm. All right, I'll just add a bit of highlight onto that background. But I think it um, shows, I'll bring back the other one as well. So that was using the Analgis color palette and we've got like a really nice, warm, friendly family um, color palette sitting mm. together. And then the other one I use the color, complementary colors and you just got such a different look. See, I've got my color swatches sitting on there now. I'll never do that again. <laughs> never again. <laughs> um, yeah, it just completely different looks, super easy to access and yeah. you can play around with things really easily. Um, and if you wanted to try some of this kind of stuff yourself, all you need to really do is set up everything as individual shapes with alpha locks and clipping masks. And then like I colored two in an, like an hour. Yeah. So you ha it's really, really quick, quick to do. Um, yeah, and then after you've done this, so what I would probably do with this now is spend maybe another hour or two getting the lighting exactly right, making sure that I'm happy with how it's all sitting. But it gives, yeah, it gives you a really good idea of how, how the family is going to work. Mm, for sure. Yeah, Someone in the, um, in the comments has just last minute question in here. Do you think that you'd ever find the clone tool useful in your work? Oh yeah, sorry. Yes, I have used the clone tool already. Like, I think it's I kind of hidden away. I always forget that that's a thing now. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I use the clone tool a bunch. It's the best thing for like when you merge a layer down. Like, I don't know if you've seen, I did a piece with the axolotls. Mm -hmm. um, yes. <laughs> and then um, I got to the end and I was like, maybe I'll have him holding a dead fish because that would be um, really silly. Um, but I had flattened it all, so yeah. then I couldn't do it. So I'll just run through that quickly because it's really awesome. I'm just putting that colour layer on, but I can't find it. There you go. So yeah, just a sh small colour layer makes a big difference to bring it all together. Mm. Um, okay, so what can we do to show you off the clone tool? I will um, flatten the toucan. Let me just duplicate that. We flatten the toucan. We could then say, oh no, I've flattened it and I hate the way that his eye looks, but I really like the textures that I've used in that area. Mm. Um, so the clone tool is just under the adjustment panel. And um, I noticed there was a change to it the other day as well. Like if you hold click, it will hold the source point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this circle that's on the screen is where it's sampling from. So you just put it wherever you want on the illustration. Fig make sure you've picked the brush that's going to work. So something like a medium airbrush would work because it's going to like um, bleed out the edges of mm. the clone tool and make it working nicely. So oh, I'm back on the wrong thing. Clone. Oh, no. You could change your sorry. You change your clone tool brush down there. Medium airbrush. Put the sample point, and then you can just get rid of that eye. It's good um, if you've, see when I um, run out of layers, what I generally do is duplicate a document and then start again. But sometimes I forget or something happens mm. and um, it's just not possible. So it just does help with the layer limit mm. to be able to do something like that. So yeah, and then um, it gives you a good point with the texture. You could do something like, um, Freehand block that, bit of an over chalk over the top, too big. I'm going to turn off the colour layer because it's adjusting the <laughs> colour picker. Um, and so then you're back with the pretty much ca blank canvas again. Yeah. You can draw in whatever eye you'd like. Um, Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's just really happy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And yeah, so just it saves a bunch of time. Now that was obviously yeah. really quick, but you can do it a lot neater. Um, your clone tool, love it. Yeah, really useful. Yeah. I think that's all we've got time for today, guys. Um, thank you so much for joining us. It's been thank awesome you. to have you. And thank you, Rebecca, for flying out here to hang out with us. Thank it's you been for fantastic no, to have you in the studio. Um, I really enjoyed it. So thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much. And um, thank you for the update. Like, I really <laughs> enjoy the update. Um, whenever, whenever new ones come out, it's always super exciting. So um, there's so much for us to work with in this. And um, excited for the future to see what everyone makes with it yeah so am i can't wait to see what you guys create when it's eventually released which is definitely this year for everyone <laughs> who is definitely asking in the comments <laughs> right thanks so much guys don't forget if you want to watch this later it will be up on our youtube channel um and we'll see you next time bye